I love you with all my heart. I love you. You are the best mother in the whole world. You are the best mother. Mom, look at me. Mom, Evelyn. Oh, she's like closing her eyes. She's like tired. Here, Mom, look at me. I miss you. Do you miss me? She was always a very upbeat, uh, smiling, laughing, joking around type of person. Hardworking, uh, lovable lady. She's a cool kitty. <laughs> I mean, she was a great mother. Um, always did things with us. Um, you know, we participated in helping her with cooking and baking and, and things like that. I just wish that I would have uh, some of her strength and her positive outlook. Before COVID, I was there every day visiting, and uh, when COVID passes, and you know, I'm gonna resume that. The news came out officially about March 13th, about March 2nd or 3rd last year. Uh, we began preparations of shutting down the facility and preparing for the pandemic. It was terrible. It was a terrible day. It's a terrible day, not just locally, but in our country as well. It was very difficult because a lot of people in the beginning just didn't understand it or didn't want to do it. Uh, when I first gave orders that were shutting the doors to all visitors or, or anybody that wanted to come into the facility, people uh, were in disbelief and said, this is ridiculous, that shouldn't be done. And then about a month later, the same people were thinking that this is how we reacted, that we, we put in full precautions and that we were able to keep the people that work there and that live here safe for quite some time. COVID-19 itself uh, is a high risk for elderly, and especially if somebody has dementia uh, with or without Alzheimer's disease, then it does pose higher risk, both in presentation would be very complex, as well as the uh, course and complications might be different. This isolation we see can affect profoundly with the syndrome of dementia, with depression. That is actually more worsening and more worrisome than patients who actually suffered COVID-19 because it comes all started with the emotional status or the isolation because of the lockdown or not able to be visited by family or loved one. Yesterday's date was the 24th of March, so it was over a year since I had any kind of physical contact with my mother. I was like in fear mostly of her like really declining, going deeper into the abyss by not having me go almost every day. Her short-term memory, actually all the memories kind of got shot, pretty shot right now, you know. We're coming at residents with dementia with face shields and masks and, and, and gowns and I can't even imagine what we must look like to them. A lot of times they can't verbalize that they're lonely, but they look sad to me. As the months went by, they, they just look more sad. With each year impact or their worsening of dementia as well as worsening of medical status, increasing fall, increasing isolation can make them more confused, more disoriented. I think at times she does know what's going on and then other times she just loses it kind of quick. 
Well, when we tell her that it's because of the virus, that's how we, why we have masks on. She understands that because she says, oh, you don't want to have germs. But she... Her heart doesn't understand it. Your grandma and my mom hold hands and they sit in the window upstairs together and they kick their feet together. After my dad died, she was having trouble making ends meet. And I said to her, like, just go to the high rise. Like, why would you struggle? What happened was she fell and injured her, I don't know if it was her hip or her back, her lower back. She went to the high rise and settled in and made friends and, you know, fixed her apartment up the way she wanted it. And loved it. And then she fell and broke her hip. And that kind of was the downfall of it all. We packed her all up and and I drove her down and settled her in and everybody was wonderful. I mean, it just, it was smooth. It was very smooth. Before she went to the Morelli Center, I would ask her, uh, where do you live? And she would actually give me her address of her childhood home. That's Avenue up in, uh, I guess it was White's Crossing or Simpson, PA. Past, a little bit past Carbondale. You blink and you miss it. She grew up um, very poor. Her father was killed in the mines and she was only about six years old. So there was a slew of kids left behind and um, the uh, family had it tough. They had to pick blueberries and walk like five, 10 miles and sell them for a nickel a quart. I mean, I heard that story from her many times. She looks just like her father. I mean, I have pictures, I mean, it, a little clone of them. My mother is the last. As a matter of fact, the, the, uh, the half-sisters, the two sisters and brother, uh, passed before most of the, uh, her, you know, uh, full brother and sister. That, that's what we want to call them. She was a good mother, great mother, fun, stuck up for you even when, well, <laughs> not me. I never got in trouble, my brother always did. <laughs> my mom is Shirley Dobrzewski. She was very active. She loved life, loved a garden. Not loving the nursing home so much, but <laughs> it is what it is. She's a mother. I'm one of five. I have two brothers and two sisters. There were three children, and um, I'm the middle child, of course, and uh, the mediator between <laughs> my sister and my brother. <laughs> We lived up in an area that, back in, in my day, you know, you did, the parents weren't afraid to let the children out to run around freely just about all day long. You came home for lunch and, and dinner, but uh, we would eat, climb the, the apple trees and eat green apples and, and all kinds of stuff. So I don't know, I mean, I'm still here. <laughs> we didn't have much. I mean, it was, you know, what she grew, what my mom and dad, you know, raised in the garden and everything she had enormous, enormous vegetable garden. She uh, made her own jelly and canned tomatoes, and vegetables, fruits, everything. And she worked too. I mean, she was uh, a working uh, mom there for a while. She was a seamstress, so she sewed in the factories. She worked. She'd get up at like 4.30 in the morning, five o'clock, have her breakfast, have her shower every morning. And then she would clean and work and sew till like eight o'clock at night. And then she came home, of course, and had to take care of us and cook and all that other stuff. She made everything in her house. She upholstered her sofas and her chairs and made her drapes. My brothers all had like suit coats and matching ties and, and the slacks and everything that went with it. And then when we went to school, she made all our school uniforms because we all went to Catholic school. Back then when I was growing up, family was everything. Like family all stuck together and visited and not so much now, lives are crazy, but. I mean, you come here and you see some people that don't never have a visitor, never. I just think, like I said, they put them here, they forget about them, and that's the end of it. We're such a social animal. So even 
normal adult, a healthy adult, has been so severely impacted during this lockdown, during this isolation, that uh, you know we are we are not isolated uh, community. So when you're not able to see your children, your grandchildren, it affects everyone. Especially, it affects even more when you have not the ability to modify or adjust your lifestyle because of your cognitive impairment with dementia. Ordinarily, they would have visitation, but we want to make sure that all the residents stay safe and their families stay safe as well. We can't have the visitors come into the building, so um, it's, it's, uh, it's a little more difficult. Some of the families are not as um, accepting of that. I mean, they, you know, naturally they would want to come in, but everybody does kind of understand that it's for safety reasons. Them not seeing their families is, it's definitely taken a toll. We can see that from day to day. We do offer the Google Duel to all family members and friends. So at least we can still keep them in contact that way. We are getting, in a way, we're getting stronger with technology, stronger with our uh, health research uh, as we are, you know, dealing with this virus. I just hope Evie's up to it, like she was really lucid on Wednesday. I definitely think it's beneficial for the family. I know if it was me, I'd want to see my family member. I just don't know if the residents, a lot of them realize that they're, they're actually talking to their loved one. I'm getting a little anxious here now. Hope everything's okay. They didn't call already, did they? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, what did they do? And I missed it. We could take the birds instead. Yeah, do you want to show me the birds? Over here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here are the two little seed spitting, molting little creatures. <laughs> okay, they don't like yeah. this microphone. <laughs> I know. I know how you feel, birdies, with that thing in your face. Is that on the top of the cage? Is that Remy? Yes, that's Remy. Oh, walk. Okay. 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 Oh, it was. Oh, I got it. Hello. Sorry. I apologize. No, that's okay. Oh, oh wait. Hold on. What happened? Okay. There, there we are. Okay. okay we're gonna, I'm going to walk to the other room. Yeah, I'm Debbie. Oh, I'm Andrea. We talked yesterday. That's right, Andrea. Hi, nice to meet you in person. Well, Hi. on Google Duo. <laughs> we're learning about the during the isolation, uh, what can we do with technology? So now we're learning, especially in our medical field, we're getting so much better with telehealth. We didn't even utilize telehealth before. Now I think telehealth will stay forever. How's she doing? Okay. How's she doing? She's today? doing really good. Oh, good. She, she just ate all of her breakfast. Wow. She drank her um, strawberry and churn. Good. Who is that? Who is that? That is your yeah, it's such a great way of patient connecting with their provider. They didn't have to leave the room. They can stay in their bedroom, in their bed, and still talk to their parents without even need for a transportation, which is so hard to get when you are um, living alone, uh, you know, in a community and you have multiple appointments. Even though she can't hear so well, even on those those phone uh, visits. Uh, or the FaceTime or what Google Duo, she reads my lips if she can't hear me so well. She's not as yeah. today. Hi, Mom. It's Debbie. I think maybe once it's over and relatives can go in to visit, like, she'll start maybe, it might start clicking a little bit. Hello, and thank you for calling the Gino J. Murley Veterans Center. Our normal business hours are 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The funny thing about her is, she always recognizes Gary. As soon as she sees him, her eyeballs lighten up and, and like she's like, that's Gary, that's my son in law. And I think, God, I'm, I'm your daughter. <laughs> my chopped liver or what? You will be assisted momentarily. Please stay on the line. Hello, Gino. Hello, Gino. Hello, Gino. Hello, Gino. Hello, Gino. I would be there every day and visiting with her and then my brother might come in on Sunday and then she would say to him, oh, have you seen Debbie? I haven't seen her in a while. Like like silly you things like that, you know. You mentioned the marketing coordinator at the Genome Jim Early Veterans Center. If you are calling from a hospital, wait a minute. 
this is wrong here. It clicks a little bit there, but then uh, other times, no. There we go. There we go. Oh, Hi, good morning. Hi. Good morning. Hi, Hi, Mom. Nice Hello. Hi, Mom. How are you? Okay. Oh, you can hear me pretty well. Wow. We just did the Google Duo Wednesday and she was fine. I mean, she was Where'd down she in the unit and oh, she, okay. she was like really like unbelievable. Hi, Mom. There. 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 I love you. Hey, Mom. <laughs> Hi, I love you. Yeah. <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> Thank you. Your mom has no symptoms. Thank no. God. I mean, yeah. she is testing positive, and you know, maybe it's good that we know that early on. Yeah. Maybe it's good that we have the rapid test that we don't have to wait for a lab test sure. to come to yeah. to uh, say it's positive. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we could get her the right treatment if she does exhibit signs. My mother, and you said your mother. Asymptomatic, that they're Nothing. asymptomatic. Like, isn't that unbelievable for their age? In one sense, the presentation of patient who has dementia, who has COVID-19 infection, may not present with typical COVID-19 symptoms. They may present with a lot of confusion, and increasing worsening of their neuropsychiatric symptom, including like agitation, aggression, um, significant depression, isolation, uh, as well as may have some associated uh, cough or upper respiratory or usual COVID-19 symptoms. It was very unfortunate. We had 10, 10 months, uh, we got our first round of the vaccine and we didn't have any any outbreaks at all and then after our first round of the vaccine we had a small outbreak look at poor tom poor tom tolerico and mary warholic and them now see why can't i remember them tom and winnie always sat at oh, this bench holding yes. hands yes he did he died yeah how about his wife no she's up there still she's across the hall from my mother and your mother oh is she aware that he's gone oh yeah oh, oh yeah i liked him yeah he was, I, so he was nice. a sweetheart oh and when mary warholic was the one that sat at my mother's table the little lady Yes. Like white hair, walked yeah. with a walker. Oh, she died too. Mm -hmm. Oh, she was pretty healthy, I thought. Mm -hmm. I, I'm one of the lucky ones. I mean, there's some people, they lost their, their mothers and fathers. We see a lot of patients in the nursing home. Uh, we have seen during the COVID with a uh, lot of uh, unexplained death. You know, it they just died and uh, uh, how much was this emotional emptiness and loneliness affecting depression, which affected their cardiovascular status? You know, it needs to be more studied. It's terrible you know, as far as the, the pandemic is concerned. They're a family to us as well. You protect them at all costs, you protect them. That's what family's about, that's what love's about. I love you, a bushel and a pack. <laughs> what did you say? Oh. She said, I love you, too. a bushel and a pack. Yes, and to the moon and back. She was always tough, just tough, and a good attitude as well. I think that's what helps. You know, she would always say, come on, stop. She used to call my father, oh, you big baby. Like. <laughs> She's saying, nice lady. <laughs> oh, and my mother did um, karate. They used to call her killer. And I mean, she did karate back when she was probably in her early 70s, late 60s. So I mean, she's gonna be 94. She, we have pictures of her in the newspaper and she has like the karate moves and, and <laughs> all that. But thank you for taking care of my mother so well. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Bye, Mom. Love. She can't stop. Oh. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Dolly. She was very good. Did it read screen record? Oh, go ahead. No. What? Uh, it stopped recording when you picked up the phone. I didn't get her video.
Okay, wait a minute now. We're trying to get a little recording of my mother here. <laughs> That's okay, no yeah. problem. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Mom, how are you today? I love you. I love you. Oh, she's sleepy. You sleepy? I miss you. I miss you. I miss you. I, yeah, very good. I miss you so much. I miss you so much. I miss you so much. Yes. I love you so much. Yeah, so much. You are beautiful. And let me tell you, my mother was like gorgeous. I mean, she's just a beautiful, beautiful woman. She'd wear um, these gowns like the, uh, for like New Year's Eve, and the slit would go all the way up the side. And I'm just like a hot mama. <laughs> Yes. You are. Yes, you are. You're a cool kitty. My mother was um, a, a jitterbug uh, contestant many times, and she won many times. She said that she would dance with this chunky guy, and he used to be flipping her over on her back and twisting and twirling her around, and and um, she was good. I mean, uh, I wish I was a fly on the wall to see it, but I mean, her and my father used to go out dancing every Saturday night. Are you my best girlfriend? Yeah, I don't know. Are you mad at me? <laughs> what about the Brooklyn Dodgers? Oh yeah, the Brooklyn Dodgers. Um, well, that was back, uh, oh my gosh, in the 40s. I guess she was probably between 16 and 18 and they would go down to Florida and the Brooklyn Dodgers would be uh, in spring training down there. And um, you know, they, she, has tons of pictures with her and her beautiful girlfriend, you know, and all these gorgeous guys, all these athletes, you know, <laughs> with them. So, uh, you know, she had a, a great time. Okay, Kim, thank you. Go back to her. You blow me a kiss. Thank you. I'm gonna go now. Thanks so much. See you soon. Love you, Mom. Bye-bye. Right. Thanks bye -bye. again. Bye-bye. Hopefully we'll be able to get a window visit and you know she could see us and acknowledge hopefully <laughs> who we are. We're setting up window visits. We um, in our isolations areas we changed some of the windows around here. If you could see most of them you can't see through. We've had some areas that were replaced with clear windows so we can visit through the windshields on the isolation unit. Even though the visitation is restricted in certain nursing home or you know, with their glasses, with their even looking at them from the outside the door, outside the glasses and waving out, or even silent, or just showing them you're there for them. At least the sun's coming out, Lens. I mean, I don't know if that's good or bad for it filming. Is. Jim's permission. Hi, Mom. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Grandma, hi. <laughs> what you doing there, cutie pie? How are you? How's everybody? Okay, good. Shirley, what are you doing? I see you have Priscilla on your lap. Hey, you. You're not talking today? You disgusted or tired or both? Sunshine. What do you have there? A little bear? You gonna give him a hug? Oh, it's cute. <laughs> yeah. Look. Yeah. He's gonna fly away, right? That's adorable. <laughs> what activities are you gonna do today? Do you know? I bet it's gonna be something fun. At least this home offers activities and stuff that keep the people engaged in them. Cognitive health 
comes with the diet, exercise, socialization together. Socializing, having them engaged in like a day program. I know a lot of them are closed during this COVID-19, but at least have some type of day activities. If they are isolated in their own house, maybe a Zoom uh, self-help group or Zoom support group or Zoom some kind of structured uh, crossword puzzles or some kind of brain games that you can play with them. The bingos, the horse racing, we do the car racing. We still do our ice cream socials. We still do our sing-alongs. Like everything from A to Z. Whatever they ask for, they get to do. With our canteen, we do canteen orders where the resident will order, put an order in, and then we'll deliver it to their rooms. Whereas before they would come down, they'd be able to shop. With the social distancing, like we'll have them scattered, you know, in the hallways. So now they just sing louder. You Are My Sunshine is their favorite one that they will sing nonstop. From the neurology perspective or neurocognitive perspective, that it's the, exactly the same. Whatever you do for your heart is also good for your brain. They play a couple of games here, and one of them is batting the balloons, like they bat the balloons like a ball. She loves it, like she loves it. She just enjoyed, um, especially the activity with the, the balloons that they, they hit them. It's not just like a couple hours a day or, or like just certain days, it, it's all day. And I think that makes a difference in their lives. If you can't do like a vigorous exercise, even chair yoga has been implicated for a lot of nursing home patients. One of the ancient mantra of yoga is don't bring the pose to your body, bring your body to the pose. The people down at the Morley Center probably realize that every time they bring in a dog, my mother just responds like incredibly. I want the dog in the window. <laughs> You can learn something every day. So learning a skills, learning a new book, learning a new recipe for a cooking book, you know, anything that you can learn uh, would be really good for your brain. They need that contact. They need to look at things that are different and be stimulated by different things, different activities, different textures, different everything. A movie camera. Yeah. Well, she knows. You're the movie star. Yeah. Well, she used to always have a camera in her hand. Maybe that's where I get it from. Honestly. It's cold out here, but it's going to be a nice day today. 50. Yeah, right away, flowers will be coming up. Maybe they'll be able to get outside for a little bit. I love you. I love you so much. <laughs> I'm gonna give you kisses everywhere. I love you. I miss you. Want to blow me a kiss? Blow me a kiss. Like this. Like this. I know. I write her notes. I love you and I miss you. Mm hmm Do you miss me? Me too. Aww. I mean, all last week she just kept saying, why can't you come in here? Can't they open the door? Can't, can't you come in here? You don't want the doors open. It's real cold out here. Can you see the snow on the ground outside? I'm hoping we can come visit soon, inside. Today? Not, not today, soon. Soon the virus will be gone. When she's disgusted, she wants to sleep because she doesn't want to face anything. You tired? Huh? Her normal self, she's cute, she sits in her yeah. recliner in her room and she has your pictures yeah. you know that if she carries it and Aww. she tucks your picture up under her shirt Aww.
push the door open. I know. It's valuable time lost. It's a year of just lost time. My hope is that the vaccine, the second round of vaccines will, you know, and, and data if enough people get the vaccine and we're showing that it's working, that then we would be able to allow people back in the building maybe that are vaccinated. Mom, I gotta go now. I'll see you again. Bye bye. I love you. We're gonna go now. Okay? We're gonna go. We're gonna go now. <sighs> Curved. I think maybe with the vaccines, you guys will be let in soon to see them again. I really don't know. I mean, so far nothing's opening up, so. All of our hopes going forward is for our residents to be able to see their family. Hopefully things will get better soon. You know, uh, we, it's still going to be a challenge as long as um, there is COVID out there. <laughs> I'm hoping. I'm hoping we have a, a new normal, I guess you would call it, but I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Yeah. They're, say they're saying hopefully we'll have need immunity by fall 2021. Nobody knew. I feel like we were just all in fear. And uh, here we are a little over a year after, and um, it's I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. I can. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Hi. Back with the camera. <laughs> it's good to be back. It was a long 14 months. Yeah. A lot of missed time, valuable time, but it's good to be back. I'm thrilled. I'm just thrilled to be back. Thrilled to be able to go down there every day. Do you notice like a, a change in your mother since? from before the pandemic to now? Or well, of course there is. I mean, she's older and more forgetful. She has good days where she's fine, but yeah, there's a big change. Hi, good morning, sunshine. Did you get up early today? We don't have a long-term study, but as we know, I think it's becoming clear and clear that there are some persistent cognitive changes or worsening of cognitive symptoms happen in patients with dementia and COVID-19, even after recovery. I noticed there were some changes that way, but as soon as I started, you know, every day, and she started seeing me every day, um, that improved. Hi, Mom. Mom. She doesn't talk so much, but we do talk a little, and she knows I'm there. This is the time to love your family and just be there for them because they need you. I love you. Eh? I love you. I love you too. I love you so much. <laughs> so much. So much. You're the best mother. <laughs> In the world. In the world. <laughs> it's just that contact with somebody from her, her life that has helped. Thank God we have places like the Genome Early Center, which I think is wonderful. What do you think other nursing homes could learn from the Merley Center? I think that people that are working uh, with elderly people in a facility like that, I, I really believe that they should be conscious that they do need that human touch, that human contact, probably more than anything. I really think that um, when they, you know, go into their room in the morning and they're getting them out of bed, they, 
open up the blinds, let the sun in, you know, don't let them down all day and have them just sitting there in a, in a darkened room. Take them to the activities, you know, and even if they say they're not interested, especially in the memory unit, take them anyway because they, a lot of the times they're not even realizing what they're saying, just to give them a change of scene. Do you think anyone has learned stuff from this experience or do you think it was... God, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I mean, I learned that, um, I mean, you can't really take anything for granted. Your glasses keep sliding down. You have a slippery nose. Itchy nose? That means you're going to get in a fight or kiss a fool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what it is, I think, with the nursing homes? It's it's just the, it's the subject matter. It's the, um, the elderly population that people just pretty much want to kind of push them aside because it, honestly, when you think about it, if you live long enough, that's going to be you someday, you know, and like it's hard facing that. You're not going to take anything to the grave. In the end, only three things matter. How much you loved, how gently you lived your life, and how gracefully you let go things that does not serve you anymore. One more drink? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You got a dry, sticky mouth. Have a drink. Plus, it's difficult when it's your loved one, when it's your parent, and you're like watching them decline. It's it's horrifying. I really think that uh, in our country, anyway, um, we don't respect the elderly like other countries do. Like, you know, they these people have worked all their lives and they've contributed for the most part, and now many of them are pushed aside. If any of you have any dementia or any kind of um, multiple risk factor for dementia-related or COVID-19 related disease, please reach out to them, just making sure they're okay, you know, and that's one of my requests to all of my audience. That's the really camera. That's the camera. Yeah. <laughs> I hope people get something out of this um, documentary, which I think they will. I love you. I love you. I love you so much. More kindness. That's what we need. The saying goes, one mother can take care of 10 kids, but 10 kids can't take care of one mother. <laughs>